Hello everyone, welcome back to the Cozy Soul Knitting Podcast. I'm Saoirse and this is episode 19, I think. <laughs> and it's been a while since I last podcasted. So first thing to talk about is, um, you can probably tell by kind of, this is, I don't know, this might be a temporary setup, um, but you can probably tell that I have moved again and um yeah we're in the new house and uh this is gonna be my new filming area i'm not gonna be in front of the yarn cabinet anymore um well maybe we'll still film there from time to time but i kind of wanted to do something a little bit new and yeah so we have my little pothos plant over here and I'll kind of try to make this look a little bit nicer next time. Maybe put some yarn here or something to kind of make it a little bit more themed for these videos. But yeah, it's been over a month since I posted my last podcast. So we have a lot of knitting to talk about. But uh, for those of you who are new, hello, welcome. Um, this is a knitting podcast, very traditional style knitting podcast where I talk about my finished objects, what I'm currently working on, and future plans. I don't have any acquisitions to share today, and I will talk maybe a little bit about what I am planning on casting on next, uh, but it'll mostly be this time around just finished objects, a little update on my little challenge that I'm doing, which is I'm trying to finish five projects before I buy yarn for new projects. I have a little bit of an update on that and I'm tweaking the rules of it a little bit to make it not as strict, just so it doesn't become something that I get irritated by or frustrated with or start to resent. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then we'll talk about whips, of course. and. Uh, then yeah, so but first I just want to chat a little bit. I'll try not to be too rambly, but we're in the new house. The move went overall very well. I will say moving during Mercury retrograde, not the best idea, but it all works out um, really well. Uh, just a few hiccups here and there, but we're finally in. We've got all of our stuff moved out of the old house. Um, which is my childhood home, which I have a lot of feelings about, um, but we're in the, the new house and it suits everyone really well. And I have my own little space here, so I'm gonna be happier. It's also just such a beautiful area and I'm still in the greater Seattle area, um, but we're a little bit further out, which is nice. Not as many people, um, got a little bit more room and my dog is loving her new yard. She cannot get enough of it. <laughs> and I'm really happy here. So it's been uh, a good experience so far. Anyways, but I'm, I'm excited because now <laughs> my parents are home and they might be able to hear me, which is a little nerve wracking. Just any of you who are also content creators know how kind of like awkward it is when you're trying to film and someone's like listening in or not that they're eavesdropping but like the fact that they can hear you is awkward <laughs> so um but when i had moved into the basement of my you know childhood home i couldn't film because there was no way to like close the, like the door and not have people coming into the room that i was filming in um just because that was the way the house was set up but here I have my own space and I can shut the door and my mom is I think in the kitchen still unpacking things. I think my dad is probably in his office taking care of administrative things or whatever it is that he does there. And so I think that while they might be able to tell that I'm filming, they might not be able to hear exactly what I'm saying, which is nice. And ultimately like right now I can't hear anybody. Um, so it's kind of a nice, quiet little space that I have here, which is really fun. Um, I just heard my mom like sneeze or something. <laughs> so still can hear people. So I know if they can hear me, but it's not as, I don't know, 
I'm, I'm feeling a little awkward, but not as bad as it would be if I was trying to film in our old house while people are around. So all that to say, I can film whenever I want now, which means that I can film a podcast every two weeks and I'm super excited. The podcast won't be going anywhere. Knitting content is not going anywhere on this channel. I'm still going to be a knitting channel, but I am also going to be broadening the content that I post. I'm going to start posting bookish content. I'm joining booktube because uh, I've been reading so much um, and I love reading and I love talking about books and I love watching bookish content on YouTube and I want to participate in that because I think it'd be really fun and I've kind of decided that I don't really care about trying to niche my channel. I know that that is always the advice that YouTubers are given like oh you have to niche your channel and you have to do one thing and you can't be doing too many things but that's not guaranteed to grow your channel right like I see plenty of channels that are very niched and their channels are still small so it doesn't it's not like a guarantee right and not all channels that are successful are niche so you know um ultimately all that to say that I don't really care <laughs> about sacrificing my creativity and the freedom that I have to make whatever type of content I want to just for the sake of growing my channel even if it's not even like it's not even a guarantee right so so I just wanted to let you know that there's gonna be some bookish content coming your way if that's not something that you're interested in that is okay the knitting podcast will still be here um, but if you are someone who enjoys reading especially if you like reading romantic romance fantasy, fantasy romance or fantasy or sci-fi or young adult sometimes contemporary romance sometimes things like that that's those are kind of the books that i read so if any of that is something that you also read maybe you'll enjoy my bookish content and if not that's okay um, and then I am currently vlogging as well, so there'll be some vlogs coming out for you. And those will be kind of a mix of talking about my knitting, talking about whatever random thing I'm doing that day, writing. Um, I really do want to vlog more of my writing journey. And also, um, I'll probably throw in a little bit about what I'm reading as well. So it'll kind of be, my vlogs will kind of be a little bit of everything. But on this channel, you're going to find knitting bookish content and writing content. Not writing advice videos, but like sharing my writing journey. So if any of that sounds fun or interesting to you, make sure that you're subscribed um, and keep your eyes out for new content coming your way because I'm actually planning on filming a video right after this, I think, so that I can get some videos out because it's been such a long time since I have posted. <sighs> okay, so that's all I have in terms of housekeeping it was a lot but i had to say it and let's get into finished objects i'm gonna talk about what i'm wearing first so oh, i'm gonna hit that plant so many times during this um gotta get the hair out of the way so i can show you my lumi pullover this is my first ever color work sweater I'm thrilled. <laughs> um, this is a pattern by Sarah Nordland and I've been wanting to knit it for a while but the reason that I ended up choosing it as my first color work sweater was because it only had two colors and that seemed like easy, you know? <laughs> seemed easy enough. Um, it seemed like it would be fun and there's the color work on the sleeve as well so it just seemed like, I don't know, seemed like a fun first color work sweater to do. I've done color work before, but this is the first time doing it in a sweater. And I use the yarn uh, Lion Brand, what is it, Fisherman's Wool for the main color, and it's in a natural colorway. And then for the contrast color, this green, I'm using Patton's Classic Wool Worsted in the colorway Meadow. Okay, if my hair ends up getting tangled with the plant, please um, don't judge me, but to kind of keep it 
and I wanted to show you the amount of yarn that I have left left from this sweater. So I actually have a full a full skein of this left still. So this is what's left from the second skein. I knit what size did I knit? Shoot. I either knit size three or size four. I remember when I bought the yarn, um, I ended up sizing down after I bought the yarn. So I bought the yarn for one size larger than what I knit, but then I was measuring. Um, I guess I should update you on this. I don't know if I've already said this. I think I maybe already said this um, while talking about this. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I used to be a 41 inch bust. I'm now closer to a 39 inch bust. Um, it fluctuates a little bit, but so I decided for this one to size down and I'm glad that I did because it still is a, like, you know, it's not true, like, I mean, it is true to size. I don't know how much pots I've used, I forget. Um, I'm so sorry, I should know this, but it's not too loose, but not too tight. It's kind of the perfect fit, so. Um, and this is how much I have left of the contrast color, so. But I also have a full skein of this left as well, so. <sighs> have a little bit more of this yarn, I'll have to figure out. Uh, maybe I'll do some sort of color work hat or something for like a matching thing um but yeah what else? this yarn is a little itchy um next to skin i do have a t-shirt on underneath it but it doesn't come up as high as the collar so i'm a little itchy right in here i don't love this collar it's a little snugger than i personally would want it to be so i think like I think normally this is the type of collar people would pop in like an elastic band into. I'm probably going to let it get a little bit looser just because I don't really like, you know, I don't like that feeling on my neck. So, and it's not the wool, it's just the, the tightness of it. I don't like things kind of coming up that far. Obviously I knew what this sweater looked like before I knit it. I could have chosen to do a different neckline, but I was thinking like, oh, it'll be fine. It won't be that high. Um, but it's just, it doesn't, it's not my favorite. But I think overall, it's a cute enough look. Um, I feel like the sleeve length is perfect on this. I had a lot of fun with the color work on the sleeve because it kind of, oh god. One of my ends on the sleeve is <laughs> loose. Um, I'm gonna have to sew that in because there's no way I'd be able to weave it in. So we're not gonna mess with that too much. I guess I can show you. I think, where is it? Right here. You can see that. I think, uh, I think I must have accidentally not woven in and that's oh my gosh did I do it here as well what the hell I did it on this sleeve as well I don't know how that happened does anybody know how to fix that I'm, I'm panicking over here because the sweater is gonna <laughs> completely unravel you know it, it would just be the contrast color but apparently I didn't weave in my ends and I just cut them at least for there. That's embarrassing. I feel like that's such a <laughs> rookie mistake. Um, let's not talk about it. I'll figure it out. I'll like find some thread and tack those down or something. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I don't even know how I would have done that. That's so weird. Anyways, um, I would use this yarn again. It, the um, patent is a little bit, you know, softer than the fisherman's wool. I really like the fisherman's wool. It's very wooly, <laughs> um, kind of more on the rustic side, I guess. I would definitely knit with it again. I would knit with both of these yarns again. I would knit with them both together. I felt like they worked well together for this color work sweater. And um, I would definitely knit this again if I wanted another color combo in this sweater. I don't know what else to say about it. I feel like I'm a little out of practice with my podcasting, so I don't know um, what else I need to say about this sweater. Uh, you guys can't really see because I'm short, but it comes down to about where the hem of my pants usually is. So 
it's a little bit more cropped than the pattern probably said to knit it, um, but that's normal for me. I always make the bodies a little bit uh, shorter just because I'm shorter, so that makes sense. Um, and then the sleeves are, you know, a really good length because they're, you know, ones that I can kind of pull over my hands a little bit, so that's perfect. And I may take this off because I'm a little nervous about the sleeves, but also it's a little, I don't know, it's kind of warm today. It's not really that warm today. It's like cold and then sometimes warm. So we'll see how warm I get in this um, and how itchy. I may look a little itchy here, so I may take it off. But anyways, that is my first finished object. Apologies if I forgot to mention any details about this and my experience knitting it, but overall I really enjoyed it and I think if you're looking for a first color work sweater to do, this might be a really fun one. Um, I might, you know, if you've never done color work before, you may want to try it on something smaller like a hat, but if you're looking to do specifically a color work sweater and you've never done one before, I'd say that this is a pretty good pattern to start with. I felt like it, yeah, it, it didn't, it explained everything, so. Um, and I did go up the, like, it suggested to go up a needle size for the color work than what you're doing for the main stockinette portion. I did do that and I found that that worked out really, really well. So, um, I liked that that was included. I don't know if patterns kind of sometimes assume that you would naturally do that or if you don't always do that with color work, I don't really know. So, um, I just followed the pattern. I did, oh, that was the other thing. I knew I was forgetting something. I did do the optional short row shaping. There's some short row shaping after the color work yoke, and then there's another section of short row shaping for the hem. I did both of them. So the hem, like the, the um, sweater, <laughs> I don't know why I'm losing words. The sweater is longer in the back than it is in the front. I would show you, but I, I'm not tall enough to show you on camera. I'd have to like change the angle of the camera. I don't want to do that. So. Um, I'll try and include pictures if I take any in this. I am really bad at taking pictures, so I uh, will see if I have any, but I really like this and the short row shaping. I, I can't honestly compare it to what it would have been if I hadn't done that, but I thought the short row shaping was super easy and it's just, you know, German short rows, but like doing it after the yoke instead of right at the beginning so uh, you know and then at the end with the hem like so it really i don't know it was fine it was fine to do it kind of gave something interesting um to break up the the stockinette knitting and i think it fits well <laughs> i don't really know for sure how it impacts the fit because i obviously can't compare this to one with no short row shaping because i don't have this sweater without the short row shaping so I don't know if you've knit this sweater without the short row shaping let me know how you liked it um and if you if you were to knit it again would you omit the short row, short row shaping again or would you attempt to do it the second time I feel like I would do it again <laughs> because I think it turned out well so yeah um that's my first finish object, so let's move into the second one. So my next two finish objects are not blocked, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you're gonna see the ends are woven in, but they haven't been cut because I haven't blocked them yet. Um, so first I have a pair of socks. <laughs> These I finished quite a long time ago. I want to say, did I have one of these finished in my last podcast? I don't know if I did or not. But I whipped out the second sock really quickly because once I got one done, I was like, I want these. I want this pair of socks. But of course, when I finished, that was when I started packing. And I just didn't have space to block things. And I also think I had kind of started to pack up a lot of my stuff. So like, I didn't have my blocking things accessible at the time. So. Um, that is the order of business for the next couple of days. I need to get some stuff blocked. But these are just vanilla socks. Um, I used the Sorella Taylor Swift 
sock set in 1989. Um, so this main color is 1989. I'm not sure what the contrast color is called, but it was a sock set. And I did um, contrasting cuff, heel, and toe. And I had plenty of the contrast color left over. I was a little worried, but we had plenty left. So um, I think the next time I do one of these sock sets from Sorella, I will probably go ahead and do cuff, heel, and toe like I did for this. So yeah, um, the contrast color weirdly felt like it was overspun. It was like winding up on itself when I was working with it. So it was a little annoying, but, but it, we're all fine. And then, um, I don't know, this main color is so soft. It was kind of starting to, it was kind of starting to pill as I was working on the sock. That has never happened to me before. Um, where I started, where things started pilling before I was even done with the project. So that was a little weird. Um, and this is my first time working with Sorella yarn. So definitely going to be keeping my eyes out um, next time I work with their yarn to kind of see if it behaves the same way or if it was like something specific to the sock set that I had. But overall, I love these socks. I love how they turned out. I think they're super beautiful. Um, and I cannot wait to block them and then wear them. So those are um, another pair of socks down. Very excited. <laughs> um, and then my next finished object is actually something that I casted on after my last podcast episode. So casted on and finished, <laughs> um, which is not saying anything literally because it's been over a month since I last filmed. So obviously it's not like I knit this super fast, but I did knit an Oslo hat. Um, this is a hat for my mom and I knit it in uh, some hand dyed yarn from Coastal Yarns down in Cannon Beach, Oregon. Um, this is in their Sneaker Waves DK, no, not DK, their fingering base, their, their sock base. It's, um, I can't remember, I can't remember. It's got some percentage of nylon, but I don't know if it's an 80-20 or, it's probably an 80-20, but I don't remember <laughs> specifically. I had a little bit of a skein left over after I knit my mom a pair of socks for Christmas, and then I had a full skein of this colorway, which is Oswald West. And you can probably tell where I switched from using the old skein and the new skein to where I was just holding the new skein um, with the outer strand and the center, like pulling it from the outside and the center together. You can probably see where, where that was because the second skein I had of this, which is at the top, um, had a lot less of the white in it. It was definitely darker. Um, so it's a little weird, but overall, I don't think it looks that bad and it kind of matches where you fold the hat. So it kind of, kind of almost looks like the brim is knit in a different, like slightly different yarn. So I don't know. I think it gives the hat character. And um, this has not been blocked, by the way. I think I already mentioned that. But yeah, it's for my mom. It's a little snug. It's a little snug. Um, I think once I block it, I'm really gonna like stretch it a bit because, um, sorry, I feel like I need to put this on a little bit differently. It's just a, it's a little snug on the head, but I think she'll get you know a good amount of wear out of it and stretch it out with wear a bit so um i feel so sorry poor plant keep hitting it uh i think it'll end up fitting her rather well so yeah and then i will um kind of i'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stretch <laughs> especially around like this portion when blocking it i'm just gonna give it a little bit <laughs> and see if it's because it should loosen up a bit too with blocking but um yeah uh this is my second oslo hat um this is my first time knitting it with fingering held double which i really enjoyed um i definitely do feel like 
I like that better um, than knitting it with just a DK weight yarn. I think the fingering held double gives it a different fabric that I like better and it was nice. I think the only thing is I would maybe size up, maybe size up on the needles, maybe one size just so it's not quite as dense of a fabric. I have no idea if I hit gauge or not. I did not gauge the watch, so. Um, <laughs> that's probably why it's a little snug, but usually with petite knit patterns, I just use the recommended needles. I'm usually right on gauge. Um, so I figured for, <laughs> for the Basel hat, it didn't matter too much. But yeah, so that's her, uh, kind of her birthday and Mother's Day combined and I also cast it on when I did because the Chesley toque that I made her for Christmas as well um she unfortunately so when we were visiting this house like when we were touring it before we bought it um she left the, the Chesley toque, toque here and then the owners the previous owners found it and said that they were going to leave it here for us, but then we came back to do like a final walkthrough and the, um, the like husband of, you know, the family, like he couldn't find it. He asked his wife and she was like, oh, I put that in the donations bin and, or like their donation, like bags that they were planning on getting rid of. And even though he had told her to like leave it out for us. So unfortunately we think that they donated it which is really sad um, because obviously I made it for my mom and yeah, so it's unfortunate, but I will make her another Chesley tube at some point in the future and for now she has another hat. So yeah, but I wanted to get that replaced for her because um, she really loved the Chesley tube and I just feel bad that we weren't able to get it back even though it was so close, you know, we were like, oh, like at least we didn't leave it somewhere, you know, she didn't leave it at like the grocery store or something we thought you know since she left it here like we would get it back but in the chaos of moving i think they the sellers just accidentally donated it instead which sucks but it is what it is so now my mom will have a new hat also sorry if the lighting keeps changing the sun is definitely going in and out of clouds i do have my ring light but you know it can only do so much <laughs> so okay I'm going to talk about whips now and I think I'm going to go ahead and take this off because I'm just getting a little itchy and I'm nervous because like I said apparently I did not leave in the ends on the sleeves and I just cut them so I need to be careful with that but let's go ahead and look at I've got some fun whips to talk about the first one that I want to talk about is one that was a inactive whip, like it was languishing, I hadn't touched it in a while, I stopped talking about it on the podcast. I brought it back as an active whip, but it's also now, once again, a languishing whip. So I worked on it a little bit. I think I already, I already talked about it in the last podcast, so I, I lied. I've already talked about it coming back into my rotation, but I'm going to show you the update but then it's it's gonna it's it's already back out of rotation because it was really hurting my hands so I'm taking a good long break from it and I'll come back to it later and hopefully it won't hurt my hands at that point but I have my bar brush all so as you can see <laughs> it's grown I think I don't know a good amount I don't remember where I was at the last podcast I should really put in a progress keeper so there's a progress keeper so when I do bring this back out I'll be able to show you um how far I've gotten but yeah this is sorry did I say this is the Barbara Shaw by Gregoria Fibers I have already talked about how I feel about the pattern it's not my favorite um in terms of how it's written but I love the pattern like I love knitting on it and I love the stitch pattern and I love how it looks but I'm just not a fan of how it's written but I won't go into detail on that because I've already talked about it in other podcasts 
But yeah, this uh, is going back into my inactive whips. I'm taking it out of my rotation because it was really hurting my hands. I don't know if it's the gauge or if it's the needle size. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a combination. Um, but it just really was hurting my hands. I think my hands were already hurting because I tried to race through the loomy sleeves. I think I hurt my hands and then I was working a lot on this and it was aggravating them even more and then it just got worse. So when I stopped working on this, that's when my hands started getting better. So I'm just taking a long break from it and we'll come back and see how it goes. But this is knitting up um, really beautifully and I'm very excited for the finished object. The yarn that I'm using is more yarn from Coastal Yarns. It's their Sneaker Waves DK base and this one is in the color Driftwood. Um, oh, and I did start on the second skein of it, so yeah, <laughs> progress. I finished the first skein, I'm on the second one. I have two more, um, and if it doesn't seem like the pattern, like when I go to start doing the decreases, if I feel like I still have a ton of yarn of the second skein left, I might make it even longer or even wider. I might like keep increasing until I'm closer to running out of the second skein and then I'll start doing the decreases just to really maximize my yarn usage. But we'll come back to this at a later date just because I do want to continue to give my hands a break from this, but I kind of miss it. It's a really fun project. And then I have another sweater on the needles to show you. And I'm, yeah, I had, I think in my last podcast, I had just started the back panel for this. Um, so now I've got quite a bit of progress. I have almost the, um, well, I probably still have quite a bit of the body still left, but we're joined in the round and this is my Oslo sweater. I've done the collar, however, I don't know, I'll try and bring this close. I don't know if you guys can tell, it's kind of skewed, like the collar looks a bit twisted and I don't know if it's how I picked up stitches or... <laughs> If it's something else that how I sewed it down, I don't know. I've never done a collar like this before. The loomy pullover, the collar, you knit that first, but then you don't like fold it until the end. And then you sew it down. This one, you pick up stitches and knit it and then fold it and then sew it down. So. I just feel like there's so much that could have gone wrong with this sweater and you can kind of see it's puckering a little bit at the back and I don't know if that's gonna lock out or if it will not matter because it's at the back I don't really know I'm gonna try it on and just see what happens at some point and then I'm also I think gonna block it and see if that helps and then if it doesn't, I might rip it out and redo it. But I'm gonna see if I can get away with it because I don't like picking up stitches. It's like, I feel like the one thing about knitting that I'm like, oh, I don't like it. I just don't like picking up stitches. I feel like I always do it wrong and I just don't enjoy it. And I try to get it over with as fast as possible. But anyways, it's going. Um, I am not knitting the size that I would to get the recommended ease I did size down I think one size just because I didn't want it to be as oversized um and I feel like it's gonna be I feel like it's gonna be perfect so my yarn combination is this Mayflower super kid silk I think it's called in pesto I think the color number is 50 and then I have some Knit Picks palette in clover and they're pairing together to create this fabric, which I'm really loving. And the more I knit it up, the more I really, really like it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and I am, I'm in a green mood lately. I think you guys are going to get tired of 
how many green garments I end up knitting because I, I actually, oh, I forgot to talk about this when I finish my finished objects, talking about those. Um, so I have finished five objects. I'm actually on six, so I am allowed to buy more yarn, and I did buy more yarn. I'm going to take the opportunity to talk about that now because it also <laughs> relates to the green yarn. So I finished my Uptown Tea by Tori Yu. I finished a pair of socks, not the ones I just showed you, um, the ones from my previous podcast, and I finished the Snow Fern Mitten. So those were three from the previous podcast, and then I finished the Lumi Pullover and another pair of socks. So that's five that I finished, meaning I can buy yarn for one project. And then since I finished the Oslo hat, I have four more projects to finish before I can buy more yarn. However, <laughs> I have, I always kind of, I don't know if I said this, but I always kind of had it in my head that if there was a hand dyed yarn, like pre-order or something that I knew would be like limited stock that I wanted to buy, that that's not included in this just because that type of thing like it's a limited edition or you know it's just like if I want it that's the only time I can get it and I'm not gonna use that as an excuse to just buy a bunch of hand dyed yarn but when I do see some hand dyed yarn I want to buy and I want to support the hand dyer like I want to support any hand dyers as much as I can um and without you know over consuming and <laughs> spending too much money so I did buy uh, some yarn from a collection that just launched today that I really saw it and I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. Like I really want to knit that. That looks so much fun. Like, so I did, I, I bought it. Um, and that does not count towards my, my whole thing. That's out of that. But I did buy some yarn for a new project um, from Knit Picks and Knit Picks was also having a yarn sale on sock yarn. And so I did get some sock yarn because I just also feel like I don't really want to include, yes, I'm including socks in my finished projects, but I don't want to, if I see a sock yarn that I want to get, I just want to be able to get it. Do you know what I mean? Like it's such a small thing. Um, and I feel like every once in a while buying some sock yarn is going to just kind of, you know, be like a fun little treat for me. So I just don't want to include it in this <laughs> especially when it's on sale and especially when it gets me free shipping so um i did buy some sock yarn because it was on sale and it's in just my opinion it's outside of this little challenge that i'm doing and some of you might be like oh my gosh you're cheating but you know what it's this challenge is mine it's for me so it's whatever feels right for me and that's what feels right for me so <sighs> but for like garments and bigger accessories and stuff i am trying to stick to that five out one in thing um but the yarn that I bought for the garment for my one in um is green <laughs> it's also green um and I'm like I have too much green stuff but I'm just like obsessed with green right now I don't know um oh god <laughs> so speaking of green my next project is also green olive green um and I don't yeah I did not have this casted on when uh, for my last podcast so I don't know how to show you this I'm already showing it to you but um <laughs> this looks really ridiculous right now this is my leaf cardigan this is a pattern by Rebecca Clo aka the Cravea here on YouTube um and I'm specifically doing the book leaf which as the name suggests, has a boucle yarn. So this part right here is um, Explorer Fibers, uh, Explorer Knits and Fibers <laughs> boucle yarn. And this one down here is their Surrey uh, paired with their Earthy DK base. And uh, what am I saying? The, all the colors are Olive Grove from the Spain collection. So beautiful it is stunning I'm obsessed and um what am I currently working on okay I'm currently working on the so let's see this is the fr this is one of the front panels the front left panel this is the front right panel 
And as you can see, um, once I was done with the back panel, where you're doing in, um, intarsia, which, oh my gosh, can I also just take a minute? Um, I thought intarsia would be so complicated. It just seemed, I was like, how I couldn't fathom how it worked. And it's literally the easiest thing. It is easier than color work. It likes like the Lumi, like the stranded color work, like on the Lumi sweater. It's easier than color work. It is easier than cables. It is easier than lace. It's easier than literally anything um, other than like stockinette knitting. Uh, so yeah, don't let this cardigan like intimidate you with the intarja because if you've never done it before, like it's, it's so easy. I was shocked. <laughs> um, so when you're doing the intarja, you're just working back and forth across the back panel. You can count, because you can't really count with boucle, like the yarn, like, or the rows, like you can't really read your knitting. So I was just counting like, okay, this side has this many rows. So this side also has that many rows. So I would just count but then when you're doing the front panels, you're not doing the intarsia anymore. So on the same row, you don't have the, um, this easier to read section to know how many rows you've done. So I've been doing stitch markers, just putting in um, light bulb stitch markers every single row as I do them so that I know how many rows because boucle is really hard to work with in that way. Um, so I've been really making use of stitch markers. And um, other than that, it's been super easy. It doesn't look like anything right now because it's just a bunch of random fabric. I've got stitches on hold over here. I've got stitches on hold over here. That's the armhole where my face is right now. Um, and there's an armhole over here. So a lot going on here. And yeah, there's so much yarn happening. Um, so. I'm not going to pull out the yarn, like this, the cakes, because they're all tangled together. It's going to be a mess when I go to work on this again. But that project has been so much fun. I would highly recommend it if you've been looking at that, doing that cardigan. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with it and I really would love to knit just like a regular version with different colors. I also feel like it could be a really fun way to use up, like if you had a couple like maybe a skein or two of different colors you could kind of and then you get like a main color for it you kind of make it into a bit of a scrappy type of thing and you can play around with like how thick the stripes are and all of that so it's just really fun and i'm yeah low-key obsessed with it so and i'm just really enjoying it so i would definitely recommend this pattern it's pretty straightforward and easy to follow and again like i said the intarsia on this like it's just so easy it is literally the easiest thing and I thought it was gonna be so hard and so I kept kind of putting it off <laughs> like I had the ribbing done for the body and I just like the hem and I was like oh like I want to start like I want to keep going with this project but like the entire is gonna be so hard and then I finally like buckled down and like sat down and like Burned through the instructions and everything, I was like, oh my god, why have I, like, why did I wait? It's literally, it's so easy. So the last thing, the last whip I have to talk about, I resurrected another whip that had been abandoned um, because I had needed to, I messed up on it and I needed to frog it and I never did. So I finally frogged it because it's a very seasonally appropriate knit and I really wanted to get it done this year. So I did frog and restart my cumulus tee, um, and here it is. <laughs> so I am knitting this, oh, there goes my project bag, it's fine. I'm knitting this in Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the uh, sunflower colorway. It's just this beautiful kind of golden yellow, and um, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I'm knitting it correctly. Um, before I was increasing I just read like for one of the increase rows for the raglan I like read it wrong and I wasn't at the time as familiar as I am now with raglan construction so like I didn't catch what I was doing until I think I had taken a break from the project because one of my needles had broken and I was waiting on the replacement 
and when I when I went back to the project after I got my replacement needles I was like oh I don't really remember what I was doing so I read the instructions again more thoroughly apparently that time and realized that I had been doing it wrong and that it also looked, I was like oh this is like does not look right so then I lost all motivation on it I didn't frog it and it was just sitting there on my needles for such a long time so I finally frogged it and now we're back and I'm not quite to where I was when I realized I had messed up so um, I am almost to that point but I still have a few more rows to do I think and then I think I'm close to joining in the round so that'll be nice um, but I haven't touched this in a little, like in a couple weeks because of the move. So I don't have any acquisitions to share with you because I literally just bought yarn this morning. Um, so I'll probably hopefully be here by <laughs> the next um, podcast to share with you. Uh, but I will show you the yarn that I'm planning on casting on my next pair of socks with because I feel like it's so very spring appropriate and I'm obsessed with, and this might be my favorite, my most favorite sock set that I've ever seen in my life. So I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna show you the next pair of socks that I'm gonna cast on. The ball band is coming off, so I'll just show you. But this is a sock set from Potion and Pearls. Potions and Pearls? Let me double it. Yes, Potions and Pearls um right here and hand dyer her name is wendy i'm pretty pretty sure if i remember correctly and yes it's her name's on here um and she runs potions and pearls and if i am not mistaken i believe she's based out of rhode island but i could be mixing that up but um she has some of the most beautiful hand dyed sock sets i've ever seen in my life i've knit one of hers already and i have another one aside from this one still in stash that I'm planning on knitting in the fall. But I think that this colorway is just so very springy. It's beautiful and it, I don't know if you can tell, it does have some Stellina in it. Um, and I know I've shown this on the podcast before when I had acquired it, but I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to knit, knitting this ever since I got it, but I got it, when did I get this? I think I got it around this time last year. But I need it. I was working on other pairs of socks or something, and so I didn't cast it on for spring. So I've been waiting almost a whole year, I think, for <sighs> sorry, my heartbeat just like went a little bit crazy there. I'm like so excited for this. Um, but yeah, so it's just beautiful. And I wanna get I wanna get another one of these skeins just on its own. I do think she sells them individually. And I would love to knit like a muscle burrow or or, um, or some other maybe not the Oslo hat because you would need two of these so maybe the muscle burrow or some other stockinette beanie um, that I could do with just one skein. I really um, enjoyed the last time I worked with this yarn. I'm very excited to work with it again and especially in this beautiful colorway. Um, I will leave her Etsy shop to link down below if you want to get your hands on this. I do think the last time I was poking around on her Etsy site, I do believe she still had this. So oh, I will leave it linked down below, but I'm planning on uh, casting these on soon within the next couple of days because I do miss having socks on my needles. So this will hopefully make an appearance in the next podcast. And yeah, I do have yarn on its way. When it gets here, I will be casting on, but I will share that when the yarn is here and talk more about it then. Um, but I'm really excited about my next few projects that I want to cast on. And I've got a lot in stash that I really want to cast on soon. Um, I just have to get some of these whips out of the way first. So um, yeah, I'm going to try not to cast on too many new things in the meantime. But that is everything for this podcast. If you um, were knitting on something while watching, please let me know what you worked on. And if you've knit any of these projects before, I would love to hear your experience with them, what yarn you used, all those little details. Um, let me know if there's any fun spring cast-ons that you're doing, um, or maybe you're already working on summer stuff, um, or if you're like 
still just knitting a bunch of sweaters because you don't care <laughs> about like seasonal things let me know that too uh, but yeah I don't think I have anything else to share with you today so that is the end of the podcast I will be back in two weeks with another podcast episode and in the meantime there should be a few bookish videos that go up as well as maybe a vlog or two so if any of that sounds interesting to you make sure that you're subscribed and if you want to go ahead and put, uh, turn on post notifications you can do that as well and then you won't miss any of my uploads um but yeah i would love to hear from you let me know how you're doing um since it's been a while since i have chatted with any of you lately um but for those of you who have stuck around uh through my little absence while I was in the moving process, thank you so much. And uh, you know, thank you for still being here. Thank you for coming and watching this video and hanging out with me for a while. Uh, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and fantastic rest of your week. I hope you get lots of knitting time in. Other than that, I will see you in my next video. Bye. All right, this is a song that I wrote about falling too fast, but I wouldn't know anything about that. I don't wanna lose my ground in So you catch me not responding And I press my lips together So you don't find any answers